You can, or you can do this now. Okay. Oh, there we go. That's the new button. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, happy Friday. My name is Misty Petrella. You are here for How Not to Make Money. Of course, we'll not be talking about how not to make money. But this is a what will hopefully be a fun and somewhat powerful discussion about what stops us from making regular bank, right? Because I am just sure that it is not the strategy that is the issue. I actually know from, well, myself and from my own clients, right? From my own experiences, the strategy isn't the issue. That's not why we're not making the money we want. So let's talk about that. So guys, whoever's here, I'm not sure how many people are on the call now, but whoever's here, welcome, hello, everyone. Um, uh, I want you to chat me in the chat box. So tell me on a scale of like one to five, I've sort of been using that scale this week. One is like, I dread it. And five is like, dude, I got this. Like, where do you fall on the scale of your comfort, basically, with making money? How do you feel about it? Let's just like gauge the group. Because I'm telling you right now, I've been everywhere from one to zero to six and in between. <laughs> so don't worry about your number, but put it in the chat box, please. I'd love to hear how, you, how comfortable you guys feel with making income. One is I feel very uncomfortable and five is like, I got this. I just want to make it more regular. <laughs> we got fours, we got fives right now in my business, one in other areas. We got a three. I totally hear you on that. You guys literally, I've been a one and not all that terribly long ago. <laughs> I was really stuck. We'll talk about that in a minute, but okay. So we're all, we're like sort of around. We have a variety, right? Okay, cool. So what do you think is like, what is your biggest frustration with the process? The whole biggest frustration with making income period. What is your, on a regular basis, you know, that like I can live on it kind of money. <laughs> I'm not saying we're talking about like a million dollars in like two weeks. We're not talking about that kind of money, but we're talking about reasonable living on money. What's stopping us from doing that? Finding the right prospects. I hear you on that. Putting out an offer and getting crickets. Ooh, girl, I hear you on that. I have no idea what I offer. Now, here's, here, here, Christy, you know what? I... I totally understand because that's been my experience lately too guys is that my work has been shifting a little bit from just like doing straight business strategy to this more sort of that's why I love you too um from doing just straight business strategy to this more um holistic uh approach right because I'm into the transformational stuff that's really my geek but I know all the business stuff too right so so I so I've been I've been to um, the straight business strategy work and now doing a more full holistic sort of work for entrepreneurs and their businesses. Right. And so during that transition, I hit a spot where I was like, Oh crap. What am I offering? Like what now that this work I'm doing is slightly different, it feels like I'm starting at scratch. I had this sense of like starting at scratch again. Okay, so I have a visceral sense of what that feels like, and I understand. But let me tell you this, it ain't your offer that's the issue, and we'll talk about what that actually is. Um, right, Michelle, plenty of times, you've been there, right, I think as entrepreneurs, we, you know, we have ups and downs, right? And I think right there is one of the biggest things that stops us from creating regular income. And that's managing those ups and downs. It's not like in a regular business when someone is having, you know, like in a group of employees, I don't know, however many in a company, most of you worked in businesses. Um, 
if one person is having a bad week or is struggling or isn't sure how to proceed through a situation, there's other people there that will come and back them up that know the stuff, that know how to make the business still work. But guys, when we struggle, when we're like, oh, wait, what am I doing again now? Which literally just happened to me. Uh, that can really shut you down. That, it's almost like a shrinking, I think. Kind of, but not quite. It's weird. And so I totally understand you there. That one can be really tough. Um, okay. A big one for me, a big, big block for me also was once I do this thing, then I will be creating income. Once I get my new website up, once I um, heal enough money blocks, that was a big one for me. Once I, I don't know, I just kept putting limitations on it. Eventually I'll make money if I do, if I twist into a certain way and look like the certain kind of entrepreneur. Once I discover what is wrong with me and then I fix it, yes! See, like we're internalizing income. Huge money block number two, guys. We personalize it. Like, if someone doesn't respond to my offer, I, clearly they don't like me or my thing. I've definitely been there in my business, right? If, I mean, right, um, it can get really fearful. And so getting through those times <laughs> is huge. Once I discover what is wrong with me, and then I fix it. So as we personalize it, Right, because let's say about when you're buying something, let's even turn this around a little bit. When you are buying something, do you have, well, maybe you do, but do you have like personal, maybe we do. Do we have personal blocks around like how the company, well, actually we do. I do have personal blocks around how the company manufactures a thing or creates it, right? That is really important to me. So um, how do we, pause, <laughs> rewind. <laughs> okay, so most of the time when people don't respond to our stuff, when I choose to buy something I find value and I have no issue with buying it, right, very important. But guys, when, when, I just love my joy of God, I get. So when people choose to buy our, or if people don't respond to our stuff, that's where I was. If people don't respond to our stuff, it has very little to do with you. But we take that, many of us, and I have done it, we take that in as like, this is the universe telling me I shouldn't proceed. This is a sign that, the thing I'm doing isn't good or that I'm not good. Huge money mistake I've made <laughs> in the past. <laughs> Every once in a while, that one will sneak back in and I have to check myself. Like, wait, that didn't get a response. Oh, wait, hold on. Literally. That's my present struggle to the degree I had to put myself in timeout yesterday, but it isn't just money, right? That applies to everything. Yes, I hear you. Another big one. I'm spiritual, right? So that making of money 
Like, I don't have to worry about that. It'll just come my way if I give enough. Oh boy. The coaching school I went to actually enabled that process. They were like, yeah, just give away an hour of coaching. If someone likes you, they'll buy your stuff. Oh, that'll get you. That really slowed me down, right? So you give and give, the whole giving thing, right? Spiritual thing is a biggie for me, yes. Oh, goodness. If I worry about money, then I'm not spiritual. Or if I, if I think about it too much, that's not spiritual. That's a big one. I'm done with freebies. Yes, Michelle, I agree. You guys, I gave, that was one of the things I sent out an email today. I don't know if you saw it or not, but I, I did over 150 discovery calls to learn that free is pretty terrible because there's always someone who's gonna take the free. <laughs> but that doesn't mean someone's gonna be, friends are horrible about this, I know, right? It doesn't mean that they're more ready to buy from you because they accept your offer of free. That's a twisty little one. I think a lot of people, this was like a trend for a while, I've been around long enough, you know, like almost four and a half years now. Um, but this was a trend for a while to give away free stuff. I mean, I dig freebies like, you know, content freebies. Amen. I gave over a thousand dollars worth of service away in one day in one group. It was the straw that, yes, mama. Oh God. You the fastest way to burn out is free actually feel taken advantage of when I give stuff away for free. My brain is worth something. It is worth something. It's worth very, very much. Right, guys. Anyone else like done with the free? Let's talk about it. It's really enticing. It's just tough. It's tough to gauge through free whether or not someone's actually more interested in you. So I find it doesn't actually get you as far as you want. Now, if you, you know, want to trade free because you need to ask some questions to some people who are your ideal clients and stuff like that, I hear you on that kind of free. But not just free for freebies sake. But again, guys, it's not the offer that makes, it's not the perfect offer that gets us into regular income. It's not the perfect anything, actually. It's not the perfect website. That was definitely one of mine. Or I used to think, guys, on the for reals, I used to think, wait, hold on, Christy, that makes sense. And if it's for research purposes, I'm happy to do it. Right, learning. Like if you're trading time because you need to talk to somebody or, you know, whatever. But as a ongoing sales tool, that's my official, <laughs> that's my official coaching opinion on that. For me, for a long time, guys, it felt, I'll offer readings in my group. Yeah, that's beautiful. And how, well, how much of that time does it, how much of your time does that actually take? Very minimal amounts of time, I would assume. Now, if you're like just pulling cards, great, free. But if you're doing like a really involved reading that's like in depth and takes time, I'd be like, no. And again, it's not the free thing, guys. Yeah, pulling cards, right, simple. That's like me doing a Facebook Live and talking, I mean, just like, you know, one of those kind of like group freebies. Those are beautiful. And I had a, for me, a, a real block to my creating income was fear. That was a big one. 
So I want everyone to like, I don't know, say me, like raise your hand. <laughs> I wish we could do, there's no like emoticons on your keyboard, but um, raise your hand if you ever wanted to put something out there and offer and didn't do it. Be honesties. It's totes okay. Hey mama. Anyone who almost put something out there, just raise your hand, say me. Almost put something out there, but didn't because they were afraid people wouldn't like it or whatever. One time I didn't put an offer out there because someone literally launched something, almost it's me, but I'm doing it now. Yes, go Misty. That's my favorite thing to do. Get it 99% ready and then chicken out. Yes, oh guys, I have done that. I've done that. Four years in business, I have done that. Oh, you're like, and then you back off. That, uh, I find the one I really have to watch out for, especially because we do so much work in social media. <sighs> is comparisonitis. Right? That is the fastest way to stop making money. And it irks the crap out of me. Every once in a while, if I'm not, it kills my mojo. Yes. Done it. I need to stop looking at what everyone else is doing. Yes. <laughs> I got a, uh, I was working with a healer one time. And she said, if you are in creation mode, shut everything else out. Go back when you're done. But when you're in the process of creating, like, mm -hmm. when, I'm in, when you're in the process of creating, it is super essential to shut down all the input from everyone else except, or I would say here, source. From your heart and your mind to source, God, universe, spirit. So, I totally hear you on that. It shuts you down hard. Well, it shuts me down hard, even still. Because I'm, you know, guys, I mean, we're all, well, not all of us are coaches, but some of us are coaches, some of us aren't. We're all in group. all of us are in groups where people do stuff that's similar to ours. Even people who are on this call do stuff that are similar to each other. Some of you do stuff that's similar to me. And I'm telling you what, I have this weird block. I was telling some people, waves, right? I was telling some people in my group, in this mastermind that I'm in, that I'm in this weird block where I, have, I don't want to do anything that someone else is doing. Or if I perceive it that way. I mean, come on, it's all the same stuff. Let's be on the for reals, right? And that block has stopped me from posting multiple offers. How is that getting any closer to creating regular income if you aren't posting your offer? <sighs> what else? Here's a big one. I don't know how to meet my financial needs through my business. or really what my financial needs are. For a long time in my work, I was simply just hoping to make money. But if you don't have enough clarity around, you know, what you need every month from your work, I'm assuming most of you do since you've been doing this, I think most of you have been doing this for more than like a week, but, um, if you don't have clarity around what your needs are, how 
oh, I know, to the penny. I know you do, mama. But seriously, if you don't know what your financial needs are, how can you possibly meet them on the regular? Like just hoping more flows in isn't going to get you to income faster. I wish that. I wish that was the case, but if that was the case, I would already be a wealthy, wealthy woman. <laughs> it is not. So, oh, okay. Here's another big one. If I do another blog post, I'll make more money. That is a big one. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at my joke, it's too. That's a big one, guys. Not knowing your pathways to income or how you feel comfortable creating income. And then we spend more of our time on the stuff we like than on the stuff we need to do. That one for me has been huge too. See, I told you guys, I've been really great <laughs> in the history of my business at being really stressed out about money. And that feels really scary. You probably know. I think everyone who's an entrepreneur knows that awful cold sweat feeling. Like I didn't do it again this month. It is. It's like shameful feeling. It feels like, oh, I don't know how to talk. I mean, it's just yucky. But how the hell am I going to pay my rent this month feeling? Yes. Yes, you totally do. Am I doing the right thing? It makes you really question yourself. Like, it's, like, like I said before, you start to like have these feelings, right? And then you're like, is the universe trying to tell me something? It is a very, very, um, well, it can be a really lonely feeling because not everyone understands. First of all, that we're crazy enough to have our own businesses. I know, nobody gets it. One that, right, one that we're crazy enough to have our own businesses. Yes to the point of tears. I totally understand. It can be really scary. And then how do we create income from that place? Right? I mean, if we're feeling all of that, That, that doesn't live in the same place as regular income from flow space, right? And it's a rabbit hole, yes! And I was sick of nobody talking about it. Thus, our conversation today. My theory now, which I'm going to be talking about for the next two weeks until the 13th, right before Valentine's Day. So this is divine timing for sure. It's like creating the income on the regular when we feel like this. Let me go to so much love. Thanks, Mom. So like uh, my theory, like I said, is 
the income doesn't come from all of this stuff. Income doesn't come from rearranging the deck chairs into a perfect offer. And income doesn't come from you know, posting enough. Actually, that's not quite true. That's an action, so I won't quite say that. <laughs> income doesn't come from having a great vision, but not taking all that action. Income doesn't come from some mysterious and magical process. There is no one right way to income. That one is huge for a lot of people that I talk to actually, is that they want me to tell them the right way to do it. Dude, if there was a right way, everyone in business would succeed. No right way. Everyone's gotta find their own way. Income also doesn't come from being pushy or salesy. That is like the old paradigm, right? So my, so we're talking about what it doesn't come from, right? Where does it come from? Misty, what are you saying? I don't know what to so my theory is that income comes from right here in your heart space. Yep. It comes from remembering that you are whole no matter what. You are whole and perfect exactly as you are. No matter what's happened to you, no matter what you've experienced, no matter what you've gone through. Yes, you are whole and perfect. You don't need to do, be, have, express anything different or twist yourself into anything different to create income. It's just about realizing what you are and connecting with joy. You don't even really need to heal anything to create income. Yes, joy is the highest vibration. How are you going to make money if you feel like boo-boo? That's like, I think, the biggest question. How does anyone make money if they feel like boo-boo? Serious. How would one do that? <laughs> those, two, those two things don't live in the same place. I think... Creating income is mostly about understanding your self-worth, right? There's nothing out here that you can change to understand what you really are. And what value you have just as you are.
it's way more about like taking action over and 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 over again. And knowing what to do when you're not in action and how to shift yourself back out. You know, like for a long time, like my income, you know, I thought I had to find like, <laughs> I really thought for a long time that abundance was out here somewhere. <laughs> and I just had to vibrate at the right frequency to be abundant. I had to like figure out what the right, I did like tune myself in to the abundance. I couldn't quite figure out what vibration it was. I was like, it's some, it's kind of like joy, but it's not. <laughs> what we do to ourselves when we're, when we're in spiritual growth. <laughs> Look, guys, the reality about income is, especially as we move into this new earth really this new paradigm is that it's all about your energy it is and people can tell the it's an imperceptible difference most of the time unless someone's just really bad at a sales conversation then it's totally like <laughs> then then you know why you're not buying their thing but sometimes when you're talking to someone you're like no this isn't quite right it's some sort of like imperceptible thing Right? You're like, sometimes people aren't even really sure why they said yes or no to someone. Two days ago, if you would have asked me, I was on personal development overload. Yeah. You guys, we're in personal development. So it's really easy for us to believe that we need to be something different to make money. And that ain't the truth. And yes, I said ain't. It's just not the truth, guys. You don't have any lessons you need to learn to make money. You don't have any lessons to learn, really, period. It's just about being in your divinity, your highest, most beautiful self. And guys, let's get back to the energy, right? If your energy is chat, and you go get on a sales call, or if you post something, people can feel that on you, whatever it is. If it's I'm not good enough, or my thing isn't good enough. That's a big one. If it's you really need money, people can feel that energy on you. If it's all of this, any of the things we've been talking about, I'm not good enough, I'm worried you won't like it. It's not perfect enough. Whatever the thing is. I don't have an offer. Dude, that is, we are in, we are all, I mean, you probably all know this because you're listening to me right now, but we are all in a space where we're becoming more sensitive. You probably already are. you've probably also experienced being on the phone with someone who is in need more than you are for whatever reason. And you've probably also gotten on the phone with someone whose energy was so amazing and grounded and powerful. And you're like, oh, I don't even know what, but I need to work with her her or him, right? Yeah, guys, that's what I'm talking about. That is the most powerful place, not only to like live from, but certainly to create income from. Because when you're in your most, you know, embodied, powerful, loving, fearless self, like all the other stuff is easy. Guys, remember the last time you were super in the flow 
and, and something that seemed really, tell me what it is. I want you guys to type it in the chat box. When for you was the last time something seemed really hard, but then all of a sudden it just got really easy and you were like, oh yeah, I'm done with that. I like booked three people. Maybe it was even a website thing you were creating or content that got really easy all of a sudden, but you thought it was going to be really hard. And then you were like, oh, this was way easier than I thought. Anyone has that story, please put it in the box. Or in reverse. If you thought something was going to be really easy, but it was really, really hard. A discussion with someone the other night with a friend, super easy to assist her, comes totally naturally. Right. Yes. Why? That's my question. I have a theory, but that's my question is why? Because that was your friend. You were hanging out. You were in the flow. You weren't concerned. You were feeling confident and in your body. That stuff puts it all in the flow. Or, uh, you know, sometimes, yes. I started out as a strictly a content writer because I didn't know HTML, ha, huh? Squarespace are my BFFs now. Right! Because you're confident and in the flow. That stuff, really real. Once you are relaxed and confident and in the flow, everything else gets easier. It's when we creep up into this big, beautiful tool we call our brain. It really stops us. Oh, it's just terrible. It stopped me so many times. It's not the perfect, it's not the offer that stopped you from creating money. It's you, it's me. It's a terrible realization. Not terrible. I mean, I'm happy I had the realization. You need to have the realization before you can change anything, right? But once you realize that, you're like, oh God, I spent so much time doing the other thing. Learning all the strategy stuff. But guys, I can tell you from my own experience with numerous countless clients, well, I wish they were countless, but with a large number of clients, they can be counted, um, is that it doesn't matter how you rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic. Oh, that's a terrible analogy. It doesn't matter how you rearrange the furniture. Let's say it that way. It doesn't matter. Still furniture. What matters is, is if you keep rearranging it or not. There's no way you can create regular income if you're not putting yourself out there continuously and often. Regardless of whether or not it's perfect. <sighs> you should also have seen the books I was Yes, you should have seen all the books I was reading. Oh, all I wanted was the answer. I know. There isn't one. Each person's business is an individual science experiment of fun. And it is a continuous science experiment until you get your experiment right. And just trying to do it the way someone else is doing it is a real risk. I try to tell newbies that all the time, Christy, but every, <laughs> they, I literally have lost some clients, not lost some clients, but lost potential clients because they wanted me to tell them the answer. And I was like, there isn't one. We'll figure it out together. I know. Thing is, if you just are doing stuff that other people are telling you to do in order to succeed, like you need to have a podcast or you 
need to have a package that looks like this, or you need to do it this way, or you need to have a book, or you need to have a list, or you need to have a freebie, or whatever the fuck it is, I don't care what it is, you aren't gonna have fun eventually. Eventually, this is gonna start to look like work. And I'm gonna tell you, the fastest way to stop making regular income is to let it not be fun. That is the fastest way to not make money is to make this business you're trying to create into a job where somebody else is telling you what to do. So, all right, let's, I'm gonna ask you some questions that might like hopefully prompt you a little bit to sort of consider where you might step into creating more income for yourself. So write down for yourself what you think your personal block is right now. You don't have to write it in the chat thing, just write it down for yourself. I'll give you a moment. Just write it down for yourself, whatever it is. You can share if you want, but you don't have to. I would love to for you to share, but again, you don't have to. Biggest block for creating income. Now my next question is, how do you think you can love yourself into shifting that block? And I don't mean like taking a bath self-love. I mean, like, where can you go in and say, or how can you go into that situation and be more compassionate and kind to yourself? How can you be more compassionate and kind to yourself in this situation? Do you need more help? Is there something about the creating of income that feels like you're missing a piece? Do you need a skill you don't have? Do you need more courage? Do you understand your value? Are you working from a place where you feel whole? Are you meeting your needs? That's one of the biggest things, guys, is like we let our businesses not meet our needs. And I mean financial needs. We're talking about income here. And that's not okay. That's a business's job is to meet financial needs. Otherwise, you'll be doing charity work or you could turn this into a hobby and you don't even need to be here to do that. You just give away your services and that's okay too. But it's not okay if this thing isn't meeting your needs. Now, if it isn't, if you're not seeing the income that you want, it isn't because you're broken. Businesses, like I said, it's like science, it's like a puzzle. And you can, it's like a puzzle, 
without knowing what the box top looks like. You have a vague idea that it's a puzzle and that there's this beautiful shape of your future on it. But that the pieces aren't even really cut out yet. So you can only do one piece at a time and see how it fits with the others. Or like a science experiment. It's like a really fun science experiment. So how can your business better meet your needs? You know, like I think a lot of times we don't really think of ourselves as CEOs. But we are. So like taking a step back, like a 3,000 foot view, like a CEO would. So you can see things from a higher perspective. What do you need? What do you need to create regular income? And are you doing this with joy right now? I think a lot of us think we can like make money, forgiveness, love, compassion, yes. Forgiveness of yourself for not making the money you want. For letting yourself not. For playing small all those times you knew you wanted, didn't want to. You knew you wanted to step out, but you just didn't. Huge, it's huge, dude. If you are angry and resentful about the making of money in your business, you can't make money. Income lives in the place of joy. That's just the truth. If you're in a resentful place, please step back and love yourself more. Resentment means that you aren't, you've been not meeting your needs for too long. That's exactly what that is. And that's not okay. Because you're worth it. And you deserve it. The work you are meant to do in this world is beautiful. And guys, like, look the shit around. We need you. And the reality is, is if that you are making regular income, you are being of more service in this world. So how can you meet your own needs? If you, if we are in such great, I mean, the fastest way to not make money is to need money really bad. Irony of the world, right? Anytime we really, really want something like we need it, you know that's us pushing it away, right? So if, you're, if your financial needs aren't being met in your business right this second, desperation is a killer. Yes. So good. Desperation is terrible. My desperation, anytime I get to a place of desperation, I'm in resentment. Those two things for me are tied together. And it shuts my business down every time. Every time. So again, guys, what needs aren't being met? It's really easy to get unfocused, right? Especially when you're working by yourself. And all of a sudden it's three o'clock and you're like, what the hell did I do all day long? <laughs> this has definitely happened to me. Uh, snorting, been there. Yes, yes, you know it. It's easy to get unfocused.
even if you feel like you're focusing on something, it's easy to get stuck in like the technology or the, I need a new website or the stuff or the things or the blog posts or doing Facebook lives. But if people are actually buying your stuff, not just engaging with your content, but buying your stuff, that means they are, well, in many cases here, they're working towards improving themselves. You're doing your work in the world if you are selling your stuff. And this isn't about selling, it has nothing to do with selling. So we are in a continuous process of offering people our things. And if your confidence has lapsed or you're feeling angry or resentful, income doesn't live in that land. They don't live in the same place. Self-sabotaging behaviors aren't going to show you the money. No, they aren't, Michelle. Shit. If they did, again, I would be rich already. I would be like sky high rich. <laughs> they just don't live in the same land. Oh, it's so funny. So how can you show yourself more love and compassion for those times when you're like, oh, Just make a couple of notes. And guys, like, I'm not talking about taking a bath, not that kind of self-love, okay? I'm talking about like journaling or sitting in silent meditation and just like being with what is ever is arising. Other forms of self-love that you love. Anyone else have a big like self-love, like a real self-love thing? Forgiveness, anytime you're like forgiving yourself. Yeah. Anyone have a good self love um, forgiveness prayer? Yes. There's also, I'm sorry, I forgive you, I love you, thank you. Like literally going back and forgiving yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. That's a big one. Mirror work, yes. Gratitude, yes. I find one of the biggest acts of self bountiful I am, yes. Um, I don't know if any of you guys listen to Matt Kahn. He's, he always says, I am the light, the light I am. You're going to start hearing me use that hashtag all the time. Yes, Matt is awesome. I love him so much. <laughs> I love him. He's like Buddhist, spiritual slash Buddhist in like the perfect way that I am too. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Um, I find that one of the biggest acts of self-love I can do is not get on my ever loved computer or Facebook or email or the Goog or whatever, the Twitter, don't get on YouTube, don't get on the TV until you've given yourself some serious love in the morning. Because we are, I think all women are on here, coffee and self-love, right, mama? I think we're all, it's, anyway, it doesn't even matter. We're all really spiritual and all of us are really spongy. So go absorb all that crap from other people and their stuff and the news and the stuff and like other people's offers and all over your Facebook and go get all competitive, you know, go, go get in there and get all, see all what the other, other awesome women are doing and go in there and, Take all that energy on and then go be productive. Go. Nope. Not doing it anymore. And as a matter of fact, the more I stop doing that, 
the more productive I've gotten. The more it's gotten easier to do the stuff I've got to do. I'm just saying. Okay, guys, this is like really a beautiful tea, morning meditation. Yes, quiet. Yes, morning routine. Yes, amen. This has been a really, really beautiful discussion. I'm so glad you jumped on here with me today. Does anyone have any questions about creating income and what it really is about? Any questions? I'm going to be doing a challenge. You've confirmed what I was finding for myself. Yeah. I'm going to be doing a challenge. Not, well, I'm going to be marketing the challenge next week. So I'm going to be launching it next week, but it won't start until the 6th. It'll be one week, Monday through Friday. And it's going to be an income awareness challenge. I don't know if that's what I'm calling it yet, but that's what it's going to be all about about income and where you trip yourself up. It's gonna be a really powerful challenge. Help set you up wonderfully for this year. Um, and uh, good, I'm glad I confirmed what you were finding because that's all true, it's in you. It's in us, that's for sure. Doesn't matter what you offer. Well, I mean, it does. You gotta like, people gotta like need it. Because again, that's what business is all about meeting needs. They gotta need it. But there's no like perfect offer versus a not perfect offer. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I love you. Thank you so much for being a part of this discussion. I'm gonna send out the replay. Okay. Okay. Um, in case you wanted to like watch this over again, I don't think anyone ever really does, but I'm going to be sending it out just in case. Love this. Thanks you. Any idea why? I never get them. Um, I'm not sure, Mamita. You got the email today, right? You are so very welcome. Beautiful. Okay, good. Well, then I'll, sometimes I don't send it. I forget. Maybe that's why you didn't. I forgot to send the last Magical Monday, so that's probably why you didn't get it. Yeah, raising my hand. I did it. I know. Ooh, bigger aspect of myself. I know. <laughs> I can't help it. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to send this one out because, um, well, I'm talking about my challenge and stuff coming up and you're going to hear all about it. And I think this is an important thing for us to be discussing. I think we need to be talking about how to make money and how to do it in a powerful way instead of in a need to make money kind of way. And you're going to be hearing me talk about that a lot over the next two weeks. Yes. All right, guys. I love you very much. Mwah. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining in this discussion. Um, you are very welcome. Thank you. I love you too. Uh, be around the group because I'm going to be talking about a lot of really cool things in the next um, couple of weeks. And I have a very powerful offer coming up that I'm going to have a really, really special deal, like st stupid special deal on in the next couple of days. So I hope you do it. Just keep around the group. You're going to be hearing about it. All right, you guys. I love you. Have an amazing day. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on the flip side. Bye.